Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Your Own, we're going to build, price, and option a 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Before we do, however, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. For the ultimate 911 track experience, the GT2 RS takes the GT3 RS's body and aerodynamics and swaps out its non-turbocharged flat six in favor of an upgraded twin turbo engine from the 911 Turbo S that produces 690 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque, making it the most powerful and fastest street legal 911 ever produced. The brutal 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS is the chainsaw of the 911 lineup compared with the scalpel-like GT3. Its 690 horsepower twin turbo flat six drives the rear wheels through a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission for a clean 2.7 second 0 to 60 mile per hour time. It's got great steering and brakes, and they don't fade with repeated high speed stops. No surprise there with a car of this caliber. All right, well, let's jump into this build and price review of the 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. We'll start off by looking at the technical specs. But before we get into the technical specs, let me throw this picture up right here. You know who this guy is? This guy's name is Shiraz Sukrali, and he was the vice president of marketing at Champion Porsche in South Florida. Now, Champion Porsche is the largest Porsche dealer in North America. Now, this guy was taking reservations, uh, pre-orders for 911 GT2 RSs, GT3 RSs and GT3s. He was taking pre-orders. Problem is, none of these cars existed. This guy took off with about $2 million. Well, I did the complete story. I'm going to put a link up. You can check that story out. Okay, so the price, the MSRP for this brand new 911 GT3 or GT2 RS is $293,200. That's before you start throwing on any kind of options on it. It's got a top track speed of 211 miles an hour. It does 0 to 60, well, we already know, 2.7 seconds. That's the claim speed. I, I believe it probably goes faster. Um, it's got a max power RPM. It does, it's got a max red line of 7,000 RPMs, and it makes 690 horsepower. It's got a PDK automatic transmission. It stands 51.1 inches high. Its wheelbase, right, is 96.5 inches, and its overall length is 179.1 inches. Before we take a look at those colors and the wheels, those exterior colors for the 911 GT2 RS, the interior colors and all that and the different wheels that you can get, let's run through these images really fast, the gallery that they have. There should be no surprise. We're going to probably see a lot of pictures of this car on the track. You're not going to really, I mean, is it road legal? Yes, but... This car's home is really about being on the track, so we're going to spend a lot of they're going to spend a lot of time taking photos showing this thing on the track. We can see a nice shot of the carbon, the fully carbon fiber hood. And I'm taking that these side vents are probably carbon fiber, as are these side mirrors. Very aggressive car. Here's uh, the Wysock package. I might be mispronouncing that. My apologies if I am. Um, here's a nice shot of the interior, the black with the red. This is the interior GT2 RS, very attractive. It looks like it does have some manual adjustment. I'm sorry, some manual adjustment and then some power adjustment. It's a beautiful seat, though, with a carbon fiber shell. And here's a nice shot of uh, a couple of uh, RSs, GT2 RSs laying around. Here's a shot of what? What is this? The Sport Chrono package, I believe it's called. Yeah. Here's one in the in a hangar somewhere at the airport. Look, we can see the airport tower down there in the in the background down there. Here's a nice shot of the interior. We can see lots of carbon fiber, lots of Alcantara, lots of, uh, yeah, this is all red Alcantara right here. Uh, I'm sure right here on the A-pillar, it's all Alcantara. Look at the door pull. It's not even a door handle. It's a piece of nylon or, or material or whatever it is. Here's another shot in that hangar. Another shot of the interior from the other side. Here's a nice shot of the interior showing the infotainment system. We can see Apple CarPlay here. Uh, the fit and finish on this vehicle is very nice. All Porsches, Audis, they, they, have, they all have great fit and finish. Here's a great shot of the steering wheel. We can see a nice close-up of that red Alcantara leather or suede or whatever. Uh, this steering wheel looks to be basically all carbon fiber. 
We can see the shift paddles back here are also carbon fiber. We've got a beautiful shot of those wheels with the one single hub wheel. Very, very nice. Getting the great pictures. Let's run through them. I think we're almost done. Here's one with some actual paint color on it. Yep. And I think that's actually, yeah, that's the last photo right there. Again, out at the airport. Okay, let's check in. Let's look at these colors and wheels for the 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Now, this color that they're showing us right now, this color is called GT Silver Metallic. And it's a forty. It's a $4,220 option, as are these colors along the bottom. This color here, which is Miami Blue, it's also a $4,220 paint option for your exterior. This color here is actually kind of nice. It's called Lava Orange. Also, $4,200 option. This color here, known as chalk. Let's get a better shot here. Chalk, whoops, wrong direction. Chalk is also a $4,220 paint uh, uh, upgrade. Now, these colors up here along the top, these, don't, these are no-cost option. You've got your racing yellow. You've got your standard guards red. You've got your black. And then you've got your white. So these are your uh, exterior colors. And then, of course, you have your custom colors you can create. But these are your, what, three, uh, five, eight basic colors that you can get for your 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Let's check out the wheels. Now, these are your standard uh, 911 uh, GT2 RS wheels. And these wheels here, they don't show the information when you mouse over, which is too bad. But I looked ahead. These wheels are are really the same but they're in magnesium these wheels are magnesium and they're a thirteen thousand dollar option but you can get these magnesium wheels and they'll cost you set you back 13 grand so if you wanted a custom color and a set of wheels you're already looking at almost twenty thousand dollars and we haven't even gotten you know you haven't even started to configure anything yet not really Okay, now we can also take a look at the interior colors and materials. So what we're looking at here now is they're showing us the black interior with the gray stitching. You can notice along where it says YSOC and all that. You can see that's all gray stitching. Now when I choose this, it becomes uh, still black suede and leather, but now you get red stitching. And of course, well, now we can see also red seat belts with that particular setup. So those are the, our colors and our wheel options for our 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Let's look and see what's next. Here's some notable features, of course. Some of those notable, notable features being, of course, that 3.8 liter engine. But now, for some reason, they're telling us that it has 10 horsepower more. We were just looking at it. It said it had 690 horsepower, right? Let's double check that. Yeah, right here in the technical specs, it says, hey, we have 690 horsepower. And then you scroll down just a little bit. And now they're telling us we have 700 horsepower. One way or the other, 10 horsepower is not going to make any difference to me. 553 pound-feet of torque. And we already know, it does 211 miles an hour. The roof is made of magnesium. The front lid, right, the front and rear wings, and the boot lid are made of carbon. The front and rear apron are made of lightweight polyurethane. And the rear and side windows are made of polycarbonate. And the rear silencers, that's part of the exhaust system, is made of titanium. Uh, this vehicle has that performance-based 7-speed uh, PDK transmission with short, succinct gear shifts and PDK sport mode for extremely dynamic gear changes. And of course, I guess it's standard, the Porsche ceramic composite brakes, so you get the uh, carbon ceramics, and the lightweight by Xenon main headlamps, headlights. A few other notable features. Uh, the wheels, I guess the basic wheels, not the magnesium ones that set you back 13K. The basic wheels are painted in satin, white, gold, metallic. Okay. Uh, or maybe both sets are painted in, in satin, white, gold, metallic. Because the other ones did kind of look that color, although they're a different material. Uh, and then there's the newly developed independent exhaust system with the titanium rear silencers, which they just told us that. There's the Porsche Track Precision app. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more about that. And then there's the Connect Plus module, which includes the LTE telephone module with a SIM card reader, wireless internet, online navigation, and comprehensive Porsche Connect services. Well, it looks like there are a few more features, well, quite a few more features for us to go through 
learn about this 911 GT2 RS. Surely it's going to be very technical. Might be a little reading involved, I'm sure. But we want to go through this and get all the details. That's what this is about. We do a different kind of build and price review on this channel. Different kind of uh, build and price. So what we're going to go through is the concept. They've got a few categories here. Concept, drive and chassis, safety, comfort and audio, Porsche Connect, and then personalization and accessories. And then it looks like there's an arrow. So there's several tiles per category. So we'll get started with concept and take a look at what they're going to tell us about the idea of the 911 GT2 RS. Let's start there. Makes sense. Okay, they're not telling us anything that we don't already know so far is that this is the most powerful 911 that Porsche has ever built. And its performance is on the level of a super sports car. Uh, it's got that super powerful engine. It's got a racing chassis. It's got lightweight construction. It has optimum downforce and maximum air supply. Here they're talking about aerodynamics and design. They're saying what? The new 911 GT RS, 911 GT2 RS must reconcile diametrically opposed requirements, right? Top speed and aerodynamics. Here's why they're diametrically opposed. The greater your aerodynamics and your downforce, the usually that slows down your that lowers your top speed. So here they're saying, "Hey, this thing still does 211 miles an hour, but it has great top speed." Right? Oh, I'm sorry, but it still has great downforce. Okay, right here it says, from words to actions, it says the powerful air intakes are of the aerodynamically shaped front apron, that's all up here, okay, They opt it optimizes cooling. So, of course, so basically well, what they're going to be telling us is that this thing has got thin, everything's in its place for a reason, right? Everything's in its place for a reason. Uh... I don't want to go through everything and read it verbatim, but let's kind of go through it real fast. Like, for instance, they're telling us that the rear, the wide rear spoiler lip makes the biggest contribution to downforce, right? All air vents are protected by titanium-colored air intake grills. What else? They're telling us that the wheel arches have vents, and those vents are functional. They reduce excess pressure produced by rotating wheels, and thus the downforce. So very cool. Next, they're going to tell us about this highly functional detail. Two vents on the front lid. They call it the hood, all right? They call, they're called NACA. I, I might be pronouncing it wrong. Air intakes. If we, let me scroll here. Let's get a better shot, actually. Hang on. Okay, so what I want to do real quick was go back to one of these gallery images so we can see these air intakes right here. These NACA, or however they're pronounced, these air intakes. These are the intakes that we're talking about right here in question, okay? Now, it says that on the GT3 race cars, that those vents are used for interior ventilation. On this, the 911 GT2 RS, it's the first time that those vents have been used for the braking series, for the braking system, right? So that's pretty cool. And this is, and it does it without reducing the brake, without reducing the... Uh, with, without reducing the drag coefficient. I totally butchered that, but it's a lot to go over. Their shape was developed by, oh, National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics, NACA, right? There you go. The predecessor of NASA. Interesting. Next, they're telling us about some other distinguishing features, like these large air vents, right? These extremely large side air intakes, I should say. And that's for intercooling of the new 2019 911 GT2 uh, RS. The side skirts down here as well, sometimes also known as rocker panels, they're also wider than those of previous models, resulting in a larger underbody area and therefore increased downforce. They were also telling us that this body is that it's uh, based on the turbo wide body. It says the new 911 GT2 RS is based on the extra wide body of the 911 turbo. Full contours, everything. That's pretty cool. Okay, we got through that design and, and aerodynamics. Let's talk about lightweight construction. Of course, if we're talking about a car of this caliber and we're talking about Porsche here, we know this brand new uh, 911 GT2 RS is light. They're telling us that they have weighed every component and permanently sought the lightest functional materials. All right, here, that's, that's hardcore. This vehicle has a power to weight ratio of 4.63 pounds for every horsepower. Apparently the hood, the front fender, the wheel arch vents, the upper part of the sport design exterior mirrors, 
The air intakes in the rear side panels and parts of the rear are produced from uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, as are many of the interior components. So that's great. Your $293,000 Porsche is all plastic. They're also telling us that the, that the hood is also made uh, from carbon fiber, which is cool. And the roof is magnesium, as we know. And then in addition to that, uh, other, part, other lightweight construction materials are aluminum and steel composites. So they've done the most they can or the best they can to really reduce this vehicle and keep it stiff and uh, responsive. Oh, check this out. I was getting ready to take off, but it says Porsche has used lightweight glass for the first time for the rear and rear side windows. Right, pretty cool. Oh, it also says that if you want even more weight reduction, you can ditch the sound system and you can ditch the automatic climate control too if you really want to get that hardcore with it. All right, let's talk about the YSOC, YSOC, YSOC package. All right, so it says the new 2019 911 Porsche GT2 RS is a high-performance beast. Yeah, we know that, but now you can get this package, which takes it to a different level. It says that visual appearance and lightweight construction form a real sense, synthesis with this package with the particular focus on saving weight. So this package is about weight savings? The answer to that is yes, because the next sentence says this. For the first time in a series produced car, I mean a production car, the stabilizers on the front and rear axles are made of carbon, as are their coupling rods for outstanding performance. Yeah, they're taking weight savings to a whole new level, which is why the car is almost $300,000. So there are some distinguishing features of the YSOC package or YSOC package. Uh, stripes. Well, we can see here that you can see the Porsche is written on the spoiler. Well, that is a distinguishing feature, as are these stripes that are apparently supposed to be vehicle color on the carbon weave, right, on the hood and on the roof. So these are some of the distinguishing features of the YSOC package. Okay, the YSOC. I, I took a moment to go look it up to make sure I said the word right. The YSOC, I think it's right now. The YSOC package, um, is, like, as we know, is all about being lightweight and saving those magnesium wheels, those $13,000 magnesium wheels. I bet you they're bundled into this YSOC package because they say 40 pounds. I'm looking right down here. They say 40 pounds. They're 40 pounds lighter and they look hot. All right. The interior is also lightweight. The ultra ultra light shift paddles and steering wheel trim are made with a carbon weave finish. All right. They are taking it to a whole new level, aren't they? OK, well, we made it through all the concept that they wanted to tell us about the uh, new 911 GT2 RS. Let's move on. Talk about the drive and the chassis. What they're going to tell us about the engine the PDK transmission, we get into the chassis a little bit, what else is there? And then the rear, a whoa, really? Then the, the rear axle steering. So let's find out about the drive and the chassis. Some of the stuff's going to be redundant. I mean, do we really need to uh, mention the horsepower again, other than the fact that they have a discrepancy between 690 horsepower and 700 horsepower? At any rate, um, the 553 pound-feet of torque is available from 2,500 RPM, so it makes its max uh, uh, peak torque at 2,500 RPMs, and it makes its uh, peak horsepower at 7,000 RPMs. This vehicle has large turbochargers, newly designed charged air system, direct fuel injection, Vario Cam Plus. It's no surprise. It's going to have all of the, the technology, right? Variable turbine geometry, twin water cooled turbochargers. All of that sounds real expensive when this stuff busts and when it breaks. Okay, moving on. They're going to talk about this PDK transmission, which has obviously been retuned for this particular vehicle because they keep talking about how it's got purposely short ratios because it's made for the track. Quick shifts, short shifts. Seventh gear is also ratio for sport and designed for maximum speed. The manual mode on the gear selector works as it does in our race cars, backwards to shift up, forwards to shift down. Yeah, okay. It's interesting how they started their talk about the chassis on this car. It says, anyone who shies away from confrontation should stay home. Anyone who doesn't tolerate a tough approach should go drive a different car. They're telling you that this car has got a hard edge to it, right? This chassis is designed to meet the high requirements at the limits of driving dynamics, period. It's got a specifically tuned chassis, right? This thing rides hard. The front axles use McPherson strut suspension. Uh, with helper springs, 
uh, and wheels independently suspended on the trailing arms and wishbones. It says the height, camber, and track can be indi individually adjusted for use on the racetrack, as can the stabilizers. And now this Porsche actually has ball joints. It says for the first time in a Porsche road-going vehicle, all the chassis joints have been replaced by ball joints in the new 911 GT2 RS, ensuring an extremely rigid connection between the chassis and the body. That's pretty cool. There's also a lift system because this thing's so low to the ground. You can lift the vehicle by 1.2 inches up to any speed uh, up to 37 miles an hour, thereby reducing the risk of you know tearing up the front clip. It says rear axle steering is standard. Fitted as standard, the rear axle steering with sports tuning combines performance and everyday drivability. It says the benefit at high speed, the system steers the rear wheels in the opposite direction to that of the front wheels. And the benefit at high speed is the system steers the rear wheels in the same direction as that of the front wheels. And let's see, this virtual effect of lengthening the wheelbase increases driving stability and thus agility. And of course, when the wheels turn in the opposite direction, then that must be, what, shortening the wheelbase so you can turn tighter in the city and in parking spots and all of that there. Pretty cool. So apparently the 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS has what they call dynamic engine mounts. All right. Now, what does that mean? It says these this electric electronically controlled system minimizes the perceptible oscillations, <laughs> motions, and vibrations of the entire drivetrain, particularly of the engine, and combines the benefits of a hard or soft transmission mounting arrangement. So it adjusts itself to minimize vibrations in the drivetrain, and it's doing that all on its own. Now, I'm going to skip right down to the bottom. They say, hey, the result is a higher, more consistent driving force on the rear axle, increased traction, and improved acceleration. And with a moderate driving style, comfort is improved. <laughs> moderate driving style <laughs> means slow it down. Thanks to the softer adjustment of the dynamic engine mounts. Pretty cool. Porsche's active suspension management, which they call PASM, this electronic damping control system, actively and continuously adjust the damping force of each wheel based on current road conditions and driving style, right? And so what you can, what can you do? You can switch between two sporty programs at the touch of a button. Normal mode is designed for sporty driving on public roads and wet race circuits. Sport mode is specially designed for maximum lateral acceleration and optimum track, I'm sorry, traction on the racetrack. Then there's the Porsche stability management, right? This maintains stability even at the limits of uh, dynamic driving performance. In addition to the anti-lock brake system, uh, PSM also includes electronic stability control and traction control. Okay, but what's special about on this vehicle is that on the regular systems, interventions are highly sensitive and accurate uh, and can be switched off completely in two stages for targeted sporty handling. All right, so you can turn this system off. It says uh, the new 911 GTRS, the regular system interventions are highly sensitive and accurate. And if you don't think you need it, well, you can just flip the switch and just turn it off altogether. Then, of course, Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, PTV Plus. As a general, Torque Vectoring is a system that allows cars to control how certain wheels get power. It's designed to improve handling, stability, and performance. And it's a feature that's becoming more and more common. Yeah, I just read that because I had to look it up a while ago because so many cars are getting torque vectoring that's just becoming this word now. And so, yeah, it's just a way of improving performance and traction uh, and making these cars do things that they might not have been able to do based on physics before. But now with torque vectoring, yeah, to be able to put the power down even better. Let's talk about wheels and tires on our new 911 GT2 RS. It says 20-inch wheels on the front axle, 21-inch wheels on the rear axle. In words, big, wide wheels, large tire contact area, great driving dynamics. Right. The wheels up front are 265, 35-20s, and out back we have 325, 30-21s. Those are some big wheels. This vehicle comes with the standard tire pressure monitoring system that not only warns in the event of a gradual or even sudden loss of pressure, but also has a sport mode that takes account of the lower pressure of cold tires at the beginning of a race. Cool. Okay, under safety, we have one module. 
the Porsche ceramic composite brakes. Let's learn about them real fast. So if you're not familiar, if you're looking at this video, then you already know about carbon ceramic brakes and you know the whole big debate about them. Do you really need them on the street, et cetera, et cetera? guess it doesn't matter on this car because this car only comes with carbon ceramic brakes because this car is made for the racetrack. And that's really the debate. A lot of times I've heard that your regular steel brake rotors on the road are just as effective as carbon ceramic brakes. Carbon ceramic brakes really shine out on the racetrack because they can really heat up and they don't have that same fade resistance, right? It says... Porsche ceramic composite brakes enable shorter braking distance distances, particularly in tough road and race conditions. Safety when braking at high speed is also improved thanks to its excellent fading stability. So these brakes don't get overly hot and fade, meaning they don't they'll keep working. They don't fade. Okay, moving on, let's talk about comfort and audio. So they want to tell us about the interior. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the GT2 RS sports steering wheel. We'll learn about the uh, the GT2 RS seats in addition to, oh, here it is, the Porsche Track Precision app. So we'll also learn about the Porsche Track Precision app. So let's uh, let's jump in right at where, where it makes sense, right at uh, interior. Let's start there. Well, they're kind of getting a little nostalgic on us at first here. They're telling us about the unique language of Porsche, the five-round instruments integrated into the cockpit right there, this whole instrument cluster right here with the rev counter in the middle. It says the dial is titanium colored. Uh, the needles and increment markings are yellow, a sporty pointer, as it were. Uh, it says in manual PDK mode, the digital gear and upshift indicators support an efficient, sporty driving style. And a multifunction display shows your, your progress, indicating boost pressure and engine power applied, as well as longitudinal and transverse acceleration, your G-forces. Within this instrument cluster right over here, they're kind of, mousing over it but you know where it is right where my mount where my uh, pointer is that's a 4.6 inch color display that supplies you with data from the onboard computer you can access the tire pressure monitoring uh the stopwatch of the optional uh chrono package and it also provides information about communication and audio settings and displays the navigation system map so all it does a lot of stuff that little 4.6 inch uh color display Talking about the materials of the uh, interior of the 911 GT2 RS of 2019, they're telling us basically that the interior is dominated by red Alcantara, black leather, and a carbon weave finish that's on many of the interior components of this vehicle. They tell us that Alcantara is easy to grip and maintain and is also washable, right? So where is it? For this reason, it's mainly used in places where there is direct contact, the steering wheel rim, the gear stick, as well as the door handles, door armrests, lid of the center console, storage compartment, the roof lining, uh, and A, B, and C pillar trims are all finished in Alcantara. That carbon weave finish is used on the dashboard trim strip, center console trim, and door sill guards featuring the GT2 RS logo well, as an example. And then what? A black leather interior with black Alcantara is available as an option. They can't possibly have much to say about this steering wheel, right? They're just telling us that it's got gear shift paddles that make you that let you make fast, sporty gear changes, right? We could have figured that out. Uh, what else is there to tell us about this steering wheel? The steering wheel has adjustments. The steering wheel rim is made of black and red Al Alcantara, which is easy to grip. And it features a trend-setting top center marking in yellow, right? You can't see it, but there's a... It's, I, don't, I wouldn't call it trend setting. They've been using it in race cars forever. Uh, but I guess it's trend setting when you're talking about production cars. All right, let's talk about the seats. The full bucket seats. These are the standard seats in the 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Uh, so the standard equipment includes full bucket seats made entirely of carbon fiber reinforced plastic. As well as their sporty appearance and excellent lateral support. They are also height adjustable, meaning that, that the full bucket seat can be lowered by up to 1.2 inches or raised by up to 0.8 inches. The height adjustment is electric and the fore aft adjustment manual. That's what we saw in that picture. The seats are upholstered in black leather with seat centers in red Alcantara as standard, right? But we know that we can get it with black as well. Then, of course, there's the Adaptive Sport Seats Plus. So you could take it to a whole nother level. These are optional seats 
with leather side bolsters, seat centers in red Alcantara, and headrests featuring an embroidered GT2RS logo uh, in red. These are 18-way uh, electric adjustment seats, and they're ideally suited to fit your needs in regard to height, seat, and backrest angle adjustments and all of that. Um, the side bolsters of the seat and backrest are also individually adjustable. And yeah. For tailored lateral support when cornering and improved uh, comfort on long journeys. All right. And for you guys that and gals and people, and for anybody, I should say, that's into the Porsche thing and into being out on the track, then you got this Porsche Track Precision app. It says for anyone wanting to improve their personal performance, right, and aim for new PBs, which I would assume means personal best. So it says this Porsche Track Precision app, allows you to record, display, and analyze detailed driving stats using your smartphone. Uh, lap times can be clocked automatically via precise 10 hertz PCM GPS signal or manually via the control lever on the optional chrono package. It says when you're racing, this app visualizes the driving dynamics on your smartphone and also displays any deviations from a defined reference lap along with sector and lap times. Wow, it's pretty cool. They're trying to give you a lot of stuff. You can also instantly manage and share records, routes, and driver profiles using your smartphone. And then there's an optional lap trigger available from Porsche Tech Equipment, which allows the even more accurate measurement of lap times, just like in motorsport. And then, of course, there's that chrono package. In addition to the analog and digital stopwatch on the dashboard, the optional chrono package also offers the following functionality. Upgraded uh, PCM to include a performance display, enabling you to view, store, and evaluate measured lap times. The driver can therefore obtain information about the timing and driven route of the current lap, as well as the previous laps and times achieved. All right, that's cool there. Let's move on. All right, here we go. Now let's talk about the sound system of the 911 GT2 RS, the 2019 model. It says the sound package plus delivers excellent sound with eight loudspeakers and a total output of 150 watts. So the sound system is not is not high on priority because that's not a very high output system. The amplifier integrated into the PCM, uh, Porsche uh, something management, optimi, op, optimally adapts the acoustic pattern in the vehicle interior to the driver and front passenger. All right. But then if, that's, if that little wimpy system is not enough, you can get this big Bose system. There's a Bose surround sound system, and it's been specifically developed for the 911 models, right? There's 12 speakers. There's an amp. Uh, yeah, there's a 100-watt subwoofer. And, yeah, it makes it puts out 555 watts of power. Concert hall. Concert hall sound. Okay. We got through comfort and audio. We did the safety, the drive and chassis. We did the concept. Here we are at Porsche Connect. Now I can see that PCM stands for Porsche Communication Management. So let's learn about that. We'll learn about Connect Plus. We'll go over these services real fast. And we'll learn about Connect Apps. All right? So let's start by learning what the new Porsche Communication Management is all about. So apparently this is your central control unit for all infotainment applications and is standard equipment in all models. The PCM features a high-resolution touch display with integrated proximity sensor, which allows simple and convenient operation, right? So, yeah, let's see, what else? So you can connect your device really easy with either a USB port or an aux. Uh, there's an internal hard drive called Jukebox, and two SD card readers are provided in addition to the CD-DVD drive for playback of your personal music. After inserting the SD cards, you can simply play your music with the music player in the PCM. I actually like that whole... Um, SD cards. That'd be nice to have all your music on SD cards. Then you don't even need to pipe it up with your phone. Let your phone do other things or do nothing, right, at all. And then lastly, I might as well read it off. They're letting us know that the uh, that there's Bluetooth hands-free mobile phone, right? <laughs> it's pretty standard stuff, but when you're talking about a car where it's really all about the racetrack and everything, I guess they got to throw that in there to let you know. Okay, what's this Connect Plus? The Connect Plus module ensures maximum connectivity in your Porsche. It features an, a built-in LTE module with a SIM card slot for an excellent wireless internet access point, which gives you in-car online access from YLAN-enabled client devices. Da, 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 da. 
All right, so this is your internet thing. Okay, and then with that whole connected plus module, you then have access to a range of helpful Porsche connected services. For example, uh, real time traffic information, which provides you excellent visual aid so you can be sure that you're on the fastest route to your destination even before you set off. Right? There's real time traffic information. It's updated to uh, and recalculated. Da 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 da. Right? Then, in addition to its range of smart services, Porsche Connect offers two smartphone apps. The first, Porsche Car Connect, lets you use your smartphone or Apple Watch to retrieve vehicle data and remotely control selected vehicle functions. Hmm. Another feature is the Porsche Vehicle Tracking System, included, including theft detection, enabling the remote location of a stolen vehicle across most of Europe. Wow. And then the second app is called the Porsche Connect app. And what this do does is allow you to send chosen destinations to your Porsche before you start your journey. As soon as your smartphone has connected to PCM, you will be able to display you will you will be able to display them in a vehicle and transfer them directly to your navigation system. So you can pull up all your directions and then when you hook up to the car then you can transfer all that to the car and not have to go fumbling in the car trying to dial up all the navigation. That's kind of nice. Also, apparently, this Porsche Connect app gives you access to millions of music tracks thanks to its built-in music streaming function. Okay, last but not least, we're over here at personalization and accessories. And what they're telling us about is uh, the Porsche exclusive manufacturer and Porsche design chronograph. Really? Let's check it out real fast. Basically, what they're telling us is that you can have a Porsche your way. Now, here's the deal. It says, our wealth of experience goes back a long way. Since the very beginning, Porsche has been dedicated to giving customers the opportunity to personalize their vehicle as part of our special request service. Known until 1986 as the Porsche Sonder something program. Today, they call it Porsche Exclusive Manufacturer, right? Perfect. You can get a Porsche your way. That's what this means. And if you know how to pronounce this super long word, pff, you're awesome. And then, of course, they got to pitch you their watch. So they've got a watch that's been designed by, jointly developed by Porsche Design and Porsche Motorsport. This timepiece is exclusively available to drivers of the 2019 911 GT2 RS. The aim is... Maximum performance, even for your wrist, with the new Porsche Design exclusive manufacturer uh, movement and flyback function. Da 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 da. So you got a high end watch to go with your high end car, because cars and watches, hey, they go together. If you don't know that, all right. You know what? We've gotten through everything. We've learned everything we need to learn. Here we are at the Porsche configurator. Now we're going to build in price our 2019 Porsche 911. GT2 RS. Right now, they got it sitting in, the, in that what color? That GT Silver Metallic. It's a four thousand two hundred and twenty dollar uh, color option. And I don't. I'm not going to get the color, not because it's expensive, but I just don't really care for it. I kind of thought that uh, the lava orange is that what it was called? Yeah, the lava orange was pretty nice. There we go. Now we're in lava orange. Okay. All right. So. I decided to go with the leather interior with the Alcantara. So what that did was that gave us a little more Alcantara right up here on the dashboard. If you look at the glove box, when I select this, that kind of goes away. If we go over here, this is a leather interior in black and black with red Alcantara. Right? We're going to go with that option right there. I think we're going to go with those uh, the sports seats, the adaptive sports seats. It's a no-cost option. right? That looks good. That gives us 18-way power seats. Uh, seat centers and stitching, uh, extended deviated stitching, interior, steering column, casing, and leather with deviated stitching. I don't think we need that on a race car because that's basically what we're talking about. This is a race car. We don't need that. Options for the exterior. What do we need? Oh, that YSOC package is $18,000. Well, surely $13,000 of that are those dang wheels, right? Here's all the stuff that it comes with. Yeah, we already went over the YSOC package. Really cool. We're going to get it. It's 18 grand. Yeah, it's 18 grand. We're going to get it. Deletion of model logo. Headlight cleaning system. No. Door handles in high gloss black. No. We're going to probably skip over a lot of that stuff. Window triangle trim and carbon fiber. Yeah, come on. I want to get that petty about it. I want that window triangle right back here and carbon fiber. Yeah, that's our exterior. Uh... 
Yeah. What about performance? Yeah, we got the seven-speed transmission. Do we want the front axle lift system so we can pick the car up and we don't scrape it? Yeah, we want that. Do we want the chrono package with preparation for lap trigger? I don't know. I'm not really into it. I just want to drive mine around on the street. Do, but I do want the extended range fuel tank, though, <laughs> for 140 bucks, so I can drive around the street longer. All right, let's move on. Let's run through these interior. There's so many options now. Now we get to this a la carte section where it just gets goofy. But we're not going to really do a whole bunch of stuff. I kind of like it the way it is. I just want to go look over a few things real fast. Like, I wouldn't mind having seat heating, all right, for instance. I wouldn't mind having that. It says steering wheel and gear lever selector in all black if you want it that way. I think I want to leave it racing. Um, what else? What else is there? Smoking package? Nay. Uh, floor mats? Yeah, let's go some throw some floor mats in there, which they didn't even show them being added. Uh, I don't think we need a fire extinguisher or anything like that. We don't need air vents painted or anything like that. The instrument dials and guards red. What does that look like? Let's see what it looks like in white, actually. Let's see, that looks good in white. What does it look like in red instead? All right, let's go ahead and switch it and see what it looks like in red. It's a little over red. Do they have it in yellow? Do they have it in yellow? No, they don't. They do not. Let's just do uh, let's do the instrument dials in white. I kind of like it in white. I think that looks nice. Uh, the Sport Chrono stopwatch dial in white. Well, we don't even have the Sports Chrono package. I don't think, because I don't even see anything up there. So I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to leave the seatbelts the way they are. Uh, interior leather. Oh, so we can do this whole interior in leather if we want. Hold on. Well, we're not going to do any of those interior leather trim packages because either selecting either one of these wanted to remove the YSOC package, and I don't want to remove the YSOC package. I don't need the dashboard in leather. I guess we're going to end up skipping out on all the leather stuff then. Uh, I was sort of kind of interested in all leather seats, but I like the YSOC package. And so, yeah, let's move on to audio and communications. What's under here? Yeah, I want that Bose sound system for sure. What's the voice control all about? The voice control enable voice of the virtually all PCM functions. Yeah, we want that. It's a no-cost option, and it makes sense. Why don't they just add that there? Uh, what else is there? Do we want the European delivery? Nah. Just bring my car over here. I'll grab it at the dealership. Thank you. Under extended individualization, there's color for leather, deviated stitching. Nay. To equipment accessories. What do we got for accessories? Um, you know what? Hang on one second. All right. Let's look through these real fast. Decorative valve stems. No. I don't want any of that stuff. Snow chains. I'm not taking this car out in the snow. 20-inch uh, GT3 winter wheel and tire set. Ooh, now, yeah. Can I run it around in the winter? Yeah, I want that. Now, that I like. Quantity? Is, is that for four wheels? <laughs> it says a set. All right, maybe you want, want more than one set. That's fine. Maybe some guys want more than one set for whatever reason. Uh, for your interior, what do we got here? Key pouches, all-weather floor mats. Yeah, I'll take the all-weather floor mats because we did get those other regular mats. Uh, transportation and protection. What do we got? Leather luggage set. Not for six grand. I, I'll pass on that. I'll take the indoor car cover, though. Why not? That sounds fun. Child seats, negative. We can skip right over that whole block. <laughs> uh, microfiber cleaning cloth. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, this is all stuff that we could pick up. You know what? I'm not even going to get the care and cleaning accessories. You know why? Because that's all stuff that you can get at the Porsche dealer at the parts counter. So we're not going to worry about any of that stuff. We've gone through, we've taken a look at everything we want. Let's get over to the summary and see what kind of damage we've done. $327,000. Car started life at $293,000. We added $33,000 in equipment. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and print off this build summary. So that way, if you like the way that I built and priced and spec this 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS, you can download it. You can download the build summary in the description below right now. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. This video took a lot longer than I thought. There was a lot of details to go over. Uh, pretty cool car. I don't think I want to spend $300,000 on it, but it's a pretty cool car. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you watch this from start to finish, you're awesome. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, other than that, I'm going to see you on the next